Okay, so before we start off with the topic at hand, uh, I was doing Hilchos Shavuos, not the holiday, but the oaths. <laughs> okay, if you look in the Ramam Sefer Hafla'a, Hilchos Shavuos, um, Yud Bez Tess, then uh, we'll see something interesting. Okay, and while you're looking for it, I'll just mention we read that one of the, the, the 24 uh, things you put someone in Kherim for is. Hamaskir Shem Shemaim Levatala O Lishvuah B'divrei Havai, right? Someone who mentions the name of heaven in vain or makes an oath uh, about something exaggerated, okay? So I wasn't even intending to look this up, but I saw what this halacha looks like in practice, and this is wacky, okay? And I'm saying wacky, like, I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but I, I'm like, like I, was, I was astounded, okay? Hashomea Hazkaras Hashem Mipi Chavir Lashav. If you hear your friend mentioning uh, uh, God's name in vain, or he swears in front of you uh, falsely, um, using God's name, of course. Or he makes a bracha that's not necessary. That according to the Rambam, then uh, you are violating, taking Hashem's name in vain. Like we explained in Hilchas Brachos. You are obligated to put him in Nidoy, right? So that that we knew from Hilchos, the Halakos we were doing. Okay, but... Okay, then you sorry. Then he says, lo niduhu, hare hu yehi Then you yourself are in Nidoy. Okay, but it gets better. But lahatir oso miyad. You, you need to then immediately release him from his Nidoy. Okay, why? Because then it's going to be a stumbling block for other people who didn't know that you put him in Nidoy. It gets better. Vim tomar, and if you should say, yodio. Then fine. So inform people that he's in Nidoy. Nimtu kol haolam benidoy. Then the entire world would be in Nidoy. Why? Shari limdu lashona meuva ushvu atami. Because people have accustomed their tongues in in uh, sin and to make a shul constantly. Okay. So the, let's just role play this here, right? If you hear me make a bracha lavatala, right? You have to put me in Nidoy on the spot. If you don't, you're in Nidoy. If you put me in Nidoy on the spot, you then have to immediately be matir me. Because then if someone else walks along and sees me, he's not going to know that I'm in Nidoy and he's going to be in Avera for violating the Nidoy. And why don't we then just, why don't you just tell everyone that I'm in Nidoy? Because then everyone's going to be in Nidoy constantly. So you see from here one thing that's very clear, by the way, okay, which is what, what I theorize, that you see that Nidoy, part of the ikra of Nidoy is just as a deterrent. Because here, like, you're not even deterring people in actuality. You're just underscoring the severity of the hate by doing like a, uh, uh, we got to come up with a, a English name for this type of Nidoy, like an instant Nidoy or something, you know, but one that's like retracted, like a temporary Nidoy. Yeah, what were you going to say? How's the world not, like, what does you tell everyone that he's in, even if you don't tell everyone that the person's in Nidoy, wouldn't the entire world still end up being in Nidoy through this? Because every time it says the you're pretty mm-hmm. much certain that somebody's going to end up in Nidoy. Right, okay. I, if we assume people are, do because again, I think you can assume that there are times people do and others just don't catch it. Right. So here, here's one little out which minimizes it a little bit. The next halacha, but made of our memoriam. When are we talking about about putting people in Nidoy? B'shaya and nishba hazel or hamavark lahav. Does you say lahav tala? Lahav tala. I've never seen it. Yeah, strange. We we just say. Mavarak Livatala, not Lahabatala or Lahabatala. Anyway, the Mazid. So this is only if they did it intentionally. About Im Haya Shogig, but if it is a Shogig, Velo Yadash is Asur, and he didn't know that it was Asur, Eno Haya Vlinadosa, then you're not obligated to um, to put him in Nidu. And then the Ram says, one of the rare Vani Omer's, Vani Omer, I say, Asur Linadosa, that it's Asur to put this guy in Nidu. Velo Anushakas of Shogig. Ella masir u masir bo shlo yasir. The person did not punish a shogeg in this manner, uh, but rather a person should warn him and um, caution him and warn him to, to not go back on it. Yeah. Uh, just the same time. Well, if I don't know what he's thinking, which case, what do I do? Yeah. But, right. That's, because, yeah. Uh, because if he's. <laughs> That's a good question. The, right. Then I'm in need or if he's. The show being like, <laughs> right. Do I get Nido if I, if I Nido him wrong? Right. Yeah. So it's a good question because, like, you know, the whole purpose of Hasra for like Onshim in general 
is to establish whether what their intent is, right? Like if you see the guy who's about to murder someone and you say, hey guy, don't you know that it's Usr and Chayev uh, um, Herig to, uh, to murder someone? And he, and he says, yes, I know, but I'm doing it anyway. Then you know he's mazid. And if he doesn't say anything, then you can assume it's Shogig. So the, your question is a good one, which is here, the guy did it and you're reacting. So how do you know whether it's Shogig or mazid? That's a good question. Yeah. Well also, interesting, how do other how do other sheets fall into this? Because yeah, the Malchulgas or the Brachas are probably Rach. Right. Well, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I guess if um, okay, I, my guess. I don't really know how the Ramam would, you know, deal with this in terms of when the Sanhedrin is in, in, in operation. But like, you know, presumably nowadays, if the person is relying on another shita that you happen to disagree with then it's not like the per- person's in need of it. Like, you know, that's a lot of reality for him, you know? Like, you know, um, what do you call it? That's the famous Gemara about um, uh, Hillel, Beis Hillel did not uh, refuse to marry their people to, you know, Beis Shama, even though they had like different standards of Mamzeros, you know? So like, there is a such thing as a lot of reality, but, um, but your, your other question is very good, which is how do you know that the guy's doing it intentionally? Yeah. Uh, let me just look and see if if there are footnotes on the Chabad.org for uh, Sefer Hafla and see if he answers it. Yeah. What's the really question? Can two people who are in need or interact? Well, we're going to see that today. Okay, we're uh, we're going to see that uh, because we're finally going to get to the definition of need or today. Um, unless this one point takes the entire time, I don't think it is. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, that was halacha nine uh, or ten. When does the above apply? Okay, but if he does so inadvertently or does not know it's forbidden. Okay, I was just going to read this, even though that's not an answer. The Turi Zahav mentions that the Ramam's view is more lenient than that of the Sefer Mitzvot Gadol, who maintains that this leniency applies only when one does not know of the prohibition at all. According to his view, one who knows of the prohibition but accidentally recites a blessing in vain must be placed under a ban. Okay, fine. But looks like the footnote here does not say how you know whether it is intentional or not. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, and uh, I actually did not look at my uh, Makbili version of it, so I, I'm not sure. Okay, so that's just something to think about uh, in, when we factor in what we're going to read today. Okay, so let's do the halachos today. Okay, this is halach, uh, para- yeah. Just one more thing. Just sure. Somehow the Ramam saying you should really mock him because it'll be with the ear just feels like it's not his style. It feels like it just feels like. Yeah, I mean, it's his Lifne Eva reasoning seems to be based on one of two premises. Either based on a premise that um, that this case of Nidui, people are going to treat lightly, right? And therefore, like, no one's going to tell everyone that they're Nidui. The guy himself is not going to act, you know, in accordance with Nidui, and then people will be overly naive here. Or, you know, because this Avera is so frequent, then these types of Nidui will be, you know, too common, and then that will lead people to treat it lightly. In other words... It seems like like the leaf naive year is like a Matthias issue that for whatever reason people are not going to take this seriously and then cause people to be over, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I get that. It is I feel like Ronald's regular style is to avoid getting into the thinking of practical or I guess, of ideas that are just sort of practically good without we did well. Well, my guess is that this Ramam is based on a uh, on a chazal. Let's just see what the sources bring up here. Um Let's see, this is halacha. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. We want to do hafla'a and shavuos and 12 and 10. No, no, 9. Bavli nadarim. Let's just see if this is what we have here. Um, Let's look at lahat here. Uh, no, let's do, uh, I'm just going to skim it. Okay. Uh, news Oh, sorry, Shamta Visharala, La Altar. Okay, that, that's the, the source. Let me just read this in English now. Amar Rabbi Abba, uh, so Rabbi Abba said, Haba Ka'imna Kamed Ravuna. So I was standing in front of Ravuna. Shama Lahach Itza, he heard a woman, the Afka Haskar Hashem Lavatala, who was Maskir Shem Shemaim Lavatala. 
Um, uh, Haskara Sashim, Shimotsi Shim Shimon Vatal. Okay, fine. Uh, Shanta, he put her in Nidui, okay, the Sharala, and he permitted her to alter immediately. Ba'apa, Ba'apa, Lalter Ba'apa. I don't know if that's one phrase. Let me just, is there a Rashi? Oh, there's a Mugos the Rashi. Um, uh, okay, fine, let's see. Shmamina tlas. Learn from here three things. Shmamina hashame haskar sashem mi pi chavero tzarech lenadoso. First thing you learn is if you hear haskar shmaim levatala from your friend, I don't think it's just haskar sashem, right? Haskar shmaim levatala, right? Mi pi chavero tzarech lenadoso. Shmamina nidahu befanav in matirin lo. Oh, I see. Hold on. Wait, no, I don't see. In matirin lo el befanav. So you learn from here that someone who was minade in his presence can only be Matir in his presence. Shmamina in bein nidu el hafara of loklum. There's nothing between nidu and hafara. Okay, hold on. So is that the only source? That's the question here. Let me just make sure I, I read this right. I think I did. Uh, uh, standing before Huna, he, serves, he heard a certain woman utter a mention of the name of God in vain. He excommunicated her and immediately dissolved the excommunication for her in her presence. The Gomorrah comments, okay, fine. Um, yeah, all right, so let, let's look at uh, another source. Let's look at the... Uh, or was that the only source listed? I think that was the only source listed. Yeah, the other ones were tour. You know, I'm just going to look at the base Yosef. See, this is interesting. The tour says, So that's different than the Rama, right? Rama says, you, what did he say? Sorry? Um, or Chayev? Sorry. Sorry, yeah, right. Uh, so this is Yahol. Okay, let's see if the, what the Beis Yosef brings down for the source. Beis Yosef. Hashemir has kar sashem mechaver tzarach lendos of Yahol Hatira. Okay. Um, uh, I'm not seeing a Beis Yosef on this. Let me look at the Aruch HaShulchan. Um, yeah, let's see, Miyad. Oh no, okay, the altar. Um, okay, Kasvatur de Kodum Shiyindu Masu. Okay, that's different. Uh, Padrinus Stam Nidwish, no. Feeling Nidwish, no, that's different. Um, uh, um, let's, let's see, Levatala. Let's look at Levatala. I mean, Varmi Morim Bishaya Hanishba has a, no, that's this is the same halakha. So he quotes the Ramam. Because of Iran, okay, here we go. So of, in parentheses, because of Iran, Roy Lehis Nados, Vloshi Hebenido Mi Elav. Okay, fine. So, the, in the case where you fail to be Minada, the person who was Maz Kirshem Shemayin Levatala, the Ran says it's you're, you are deserving of Nidoi, not that you're automatically in Nidoi. So he doesn't quote a source for that. Um, that's Akhan Lashon Rambam. Uh, okay, hold on. Oh, Kasav, nope. Yeah, all right, so he's not explaining. All right, I think we went as far as we could go in the Rambam for that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll use it. I was just wondering, it says, it says, if you tell the world, the world that any trouble will be in need, or is it just saying that everyone sort of already is? There's just like a practical effect of, of not. Yeah, I mean, the way, the, the reason he says the world will be in need, is um, sounds like two things. Shari limdu um, ma'ava. They've habituated their their iniquitous tongues, which seems to be like you know about like different types of iniquities in general. And ushvua tami. They've habituated themselves to, to pay, take oaths constantly. And in fact, the Ramam goes on. I'm going to read this while we're here. Okay, uh, this is an interesting thing. He says. Um, uh, yeah, I, yeah let's, let's read this. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we won't get to need it today. No. Halakha Yod Aleph. V'lo shuvu l'shav bilvad hishya asura. Not only is shuvu l'shav asur, 
Um, even to mention one of the shameless hamiyuchadim, so that is, um, let's see if I can get all of them. So that's Yurkevavke, and then uh, an Adni, right? That's one. And then Kel Eloka Elokim, Shakai, Ekye, and uh, Tvakos. So those are the shameless hamiyuchadim. So if you mention those Levatala, that's Asr. Vahapish Lanishba, even though you did not take an oath. Uh, the Pasuk says to fear the the uh, Hashem, uh, the, the revered and uh, awesome name. And included in his Yira is to not mention Levatala. Side question, on a side topic already. W- would you say, based on the Ramban, that if you use God's name while you're learning, then that is Levatala? Like, let's say what I just did here, when I said the seven names of Hashem Osama Yuchadim, would I be allowed to say them, you know, like, to actually say them? And, you know, everyone, like, the reason why I'm asking this is, is it seems like the majority of people I, I know are, are uh, mocked me to not say them. I know a couple of people who do say Hashem uh, of Hashem when they are in the context of learning. Um, and everyone is fine reading Tzukim. Right, like no one says you have to change, you know, elo, elo, uh, you know, to not say Elohim when you're reading a pasuk, you know. So yeah. Actually, it's just saying everyone changes. Okay, well, okay, yeah, like I know it's sort of connected to us just forgetting it, but. Right, but I mean, even calling, saying you okay, vavke with the K's is like I feel like it's a chumrah, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but my question. Well, let me let me pause this for one second here. And I'll, I'll ask the question in a more uh, um, uncensored manner. So, so my assumption is like this. Even if you would make an argument, like here's another example, by the way. I think everyone holds you're allowed to say full brachos when you're teaching children how to say brachos, right? Like you can even say a shame shemayim when you're teaching children how to say brachos, right? Have you heard of that? I don't remember this. Like, there's things I remember like, you know, bringing up sukum. Yeah, bringing up Sukkim is an issue, but uh, I'm pretty sure. Let, let me actually, I think that's the second thing. All right, let me, let me just look this up in the Rambam uh, while we're here. Um, this is going to be in Hokel's Brothos, probably Perak Aleph, uh, which is about the general principles of Bracha, I think. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's in Aleph Tes Vav. Anyone who makes a bracha that's not necessary, he is taking the name of uh, Shemaim uh, in vain. And it says, if he uh, makes an oath in vain, and it's usher to answer amen after him. Vatinokos, so this is the one I was referring to, Malamdin Osan Habrachos Ketiknan. The Tinokos, you teach them the brachos as they were established. Oh, that's interesting. Even though they are being mavarach levatala at the time when they are learning, okay, harizay mutter, it's mutter. So, so I mean, so it sounds like so bracha levatala is not intrinsically no se shem shemaim lashav. In other words, these kids are making brachas levatala because they're not making brachas on anything, but it's not considered um, no se shem shemaim lashav because you're teaching them how to make brachas. Right. Okay. Harizay and Mutter, the ain't only offering a main, only offering a main, lo yet to the Okay, fine. You can't answer a main. So, yeah. So, so we see that there are cases where saying Shem Shemaim is, is, um, uh, is not intrinsically the Shav, you know. But my question is when you're learning. And so, but, but, but going based on what you said when we were recording, then uh, I think what would happen is this will lead people, if people did this, if people use Hashem's name, you know, in the context of learning people would end up treating it more lightly, and then that would cause a increase in the number of Shem Shemayim Levatalas, you know? So it's a good practice, I think, to not say it. Um, and it definitely increases Yira, right? I mean, I think that's an undeniable fact that it increases Yira. Um, yeah, okay, fine. Then he goes on. Therefore, if you make a mistake and you express a Shem Shemayim Levatala, Yemaher miyad vi shabeach vi fire vi haderlo, then you should quickly and immediately, both, <laughs> um, praise and glorify and, and beautify or, you know, aggrandize God's name, so that it is not Lavatala. Ketzad, how so? Amar Hashem, if you said, Yukei Vavke, Omer, Baruch Hu La Olam Ba'ed, O Gadol Hu Umuhu La Ma'od. 
So this is, we are minhag to say, right? I don't see why the Ram would object to that. It seems like you could do anything. But the interesting thing is that it actually remedies the lovatala, right? Like he's saying, kadesha lo yehe lovatala. Not that it's like some sort of like makeup after the fact. It's like they're actually making it so it's not lovatala. Yeah. Oh, this is not the halakha I even want to read. Hold on. Halakha I want to read is the one before this. Oh, yeah, okay. Halakha ches. Okay, this is going off of the point that you, you made about the um, uh, people who just are constantly saying this, uh, you know, like making these mistakes. So he says, sorry, he's out here, but Katanim Harbe. You need to be very, you need to uh, uh, be careful with the kids. And to train their, their speech, different MS in words of truth, below Shavua, without uh, oaths. So that they do not become accustomed to swear constantly, Kagoyim, like the non Jews. And this is like an obligation on the parents and on teachers. So it is a, a problem I've noticed, and it's not like a widespread problem, but like as a high school teacher, there were lots of kids, not sorry, not lots of kids, there were, there were kids in like every grade who would frequently say, I swear, blah, 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 or even that they swear to God. Swearing itself is not a good habit to get into, but using the phrase, I swear to God, is is like particularly like, you know, um, what do you call it, you know, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, so it, it is a, uh, you know, it's a bad habit for people to get into because they could be over not just a Doraisa, but one of the most, you know, the Ram says, this is a very, very severe thing. Uh, you know, I mean, he's, he uses hyperbole like, um, like uh, in <laughs> uh, the top of the parak. Yeah, look at the first two halachas in the parak. <laughs> Basically, with the whole parak. <laughs> okay, but he says, Even though you give malchus uh, to the one who uh, makes an oath in vain or falsely, um, and likewise, someone who makes a shvua for edus or a shvua sapikadon, and he brings a korban. So the uh, he does not get complete kapara on the shvua. As it says, Hashem will not cleanse him. Okay, why? He cannot get cleansed from the Din Shemaim until he pays off the, or he uh, gets punished for uh, the great name that he desecrated. Right, so it's a chil Hashem when you take a, 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 a Shavua that is uh, improper. Yoser Mikol Haaveros. Therefore, you need to be careful with this avera more so than all the other averas. Now, that's clearly hyperbole because Ram is not going to say that this is more important than Avodah Zara or Yuvah Hashem, but it is a, a deserving hyperbole because it's about the Shem Shemayim. Similarly, Avon Zemin Hamurasu, this Avon is considered one of the strict sins. Even though you don't get Karis or Bastin, which is usually the bare definition of Hamuros, Yishbil Chil Hashem Hamukudash, this contains a desecration of the holy name, Shuhu Gadol Mikol Havonos, which is worse than all the Havonos, yeah. Wait, was there a reason not to tell us that here literally because like, Shavu Zara might be a worse sin, but it's just, or at least in the raw mom's time, harder, like, less likely for a person to do. That could be, it could be. Um, like the high soul thing you're talking about for this first statement, you need to be yeah. more careful. Yeah, that, that's probably a good, that's probably a good explanation, yeah. Yeah, although, um, and, so this statement you could explain uh, literally also, though, I think, because, uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> I'm going to spoil a shavuosh here. Rebbe gave a shavuosh here on a Zara. I forgot what year it was. I want to say, like, I don't remember, <laughs> but um, I want to say, like, 2008, uh, maybe 2007. And the major svara of the shavuosh here was that the humra of, like, the... the Avodazara is so chamor because the essence of Avodazara is that you're being mishakeach um, shem Hashem, is that you're causing the shem Hashem to be forgotten. You know, so uh, is that another Avodazara is bad because it's a distortion of the shem Hashem. So you could say that philosophically, it is true that Chil Hashem is the worst of uh, of all the averos because even Avodazara is is bad because of that. Yeah. Like this from like, like, let's say, uh, 
Like, let's say I was addicted to drugs and it was ruining my life. Yeah. And I, and I was making a shvua against doing drugs. Right. So here's the thing. I mean, first of all, we have to differentiate between uh, nidarim and shavuos, mm-hmm. right? And I don't, you know, nidarim seems to be the thing that the Rambam says is used to control your taivas. You know, like that's where he talks about the use of nidarim for, for control of taivas. In fact, because um, Hilchos, uh, I, guess we're, I guess I'm in a safer hafla mood today. <laughs> um, look at the end of Hilchos nidarim. Uh Let's see. Yeah. Uh, Nadarim chapter 13, Halakha Chafhe. Uh, actually, sorry, Chaf Gimel, Chaf Gimel and Chaf, uh, sorry, Chaf Gimel and Chaf Dalad. I, I said the wrong ones. I was looking at the wrong letters. Yeah. So, um, Misha, you got it? Uh, Misha Nadar Nadarim Kede Lachonin Deyosa, Ulasake Masa, someone who makes vows in order to um, establish or straighten out his uh, his character traits and to correct his behavior. That's beautiful and praiseworthy. Uh, how so? So he gives your example. Uh, someone who is a uh, glutton, right? A, 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 a meat gorger, right? So he's a meat addict. And he prohibits meat upon himself for a year or two. Omisha Shoga Biyain. That's actually your example. Someone who's a um, who strays in uh, wine, right? Who's an alcoholic. But Asar Hayain Al Atmosman Muruva, and he prohibits wine on himself for a long time. Osha Asar Hashikrus Olam, or he Asar Shikrus. Which, by the way, side point: two strategies for for that the Ram is outlining for dealing with a a um, uh, 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 drug addiction, right? One is you Asar the substance. The other is you usher the state, the problematic state, you know, and some people can do one. And like there are people who, you know, let's say like Alcoholics Anonymous philosophy is complete abstinence, you know, and that works for lots of people. But then other people, either that wouldn't be realistic or it's not necessary. And for them, it would be like limiting themselves to one glass where you're not going to get shicker, but you'll still partake of the substance. So I, just, I think it's just interesting that the wrong acknowledges both categories uh, here. He obviously he can't do that with meat because there's no state you get into with meat. So maybe like a food coma. But uh, all right. Someone who chases profits, P R O F I T S, um, not Nevim. Chasing Nevim is a good thing. That's a mitzvah in Hilchos Deos Perek Vav. Halahon, or someone who is like uh, obsessed with money. And he prohibits gifts upon himself. Or he says, I'm not going to get any um, money from people uh, in the five towns, right? Like, you know, a specific uh, area. Someone who is a haughty about his appearance, and he becomes a Nazir, and other things like that. All of them are ways of Avoda Lashem. And regarding all of these things, they said that a fence for uh, separation from pleasures uh, or over addiction to pleasures, how you, however you want to translate precious, I don't like abstinence um, that has too much of a ascetic connotation, nidarim. So nidarim are a fence for precious. Okay. The alpha pishi in avoda, even though they are avoda, lo yarbe adam benidre isor. Nevertheless, a person should not. Um, be um, excessive in the darim of prohibition, and not accustom himself to them. Below neder, he should separate from these things without a neder. In other words, it's a last resort uh, neder thing. Amru uh, kola noder say anyone who makes a neder, it's as if he built a bama. Vim avar and if he um, uh, is over and he makes a neder, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, the im of our and if he uh, transgresses and makes a neder, mitzvah he shall on nedaro. It is a mitzvah to um, uh, consult a chacham about his neder to get it matir kedeshlo yeh nikshal lefanav. Uh, so that it does not become a stumbling block before him. Another stumbling block thing. Okay, but when are we talking about where it's good to not do a neder lachat chila? The nidre isar. That's in nidarim of prohibition. Aval nidre hektesh, but a neder for hektesh, I guess, like 
consecrating something, mitzvah l'kaiman, it is a mitzvah to fulfill them. Sorry, I, I, I said it wrong. When is it, are we talking about that you should go to Chacham to get it be matiered? That's um, for Nidre Isar, so that it's not a mitzvah. But if it's Nidre Hekdash, mitzvah l'kaiman, then it's a mitzvah to fulfill them, v'lo yishal alein alamidochak, and you should only have it matiered out of uh, like extreme necessity. It says, I will pay my uh, nidarim to Hashem. So the point being, if you look at the end of Hilchus uh, Shavuos that we were talking about, he doesn't really talk about using Shavuos in this way. Not that you can't, but Nadarim is really seems like he's holding is the, the the tool that you use to regulate uh, addictions or or like cultivate precious. Yeah, there's a lot of other things. like there's interpersonal things where like like say a parent who who swear who in the seventh century swearing will never put in retirement on the old like it's a way to commit yourself. You'll never really just show them a child right. and make sure that that right. they can build your house. Right, right. Yeah. So your so your question about that was is that something that is uh, like uh, you should do or I mean like in this term, just thing I guess things which they're like they're not like frivolous things, but at the same time I guess maybe the prince of bad example, like just all I think it was like a, a group of friends who they have a commitment who just they like sort of to do something. Yeah. Like not not like it's not like it's a frivolous thing, but it's just a a serious thing which just happens to not have much fault with that. Right. So he, here's the case where he talks about that. This is in Shavuos Yodal of Gimel. <laughs> we really are in a lot of Shavuos today. Okay. Um uh uh okay. Um uh, yeah, Gimel, uh, Yudalf Gimel. Umutur la Adam li Shabea alha mitzvah la asosa. So, like in your case, it's a kibbutz of aim thing, right? Why? Why do you use kedei lazarez as asmo to motivate himself? The alpha pishu who mushba aleha mihar sinai, even though you already are mushba mihar sinai in terms of the mitzvah, shemar nishpati va kaima lishmor mishpote titacha. Okay, so in other words, that, that's an odd thing. I didn't know that. Yeah. But so, but that sounds like the category you're talking about, right? Where you're doing it to like motivate yourself to do it. Yeah, to, it, was, it, it that, was, that was the first thing. The second thing was just like you and your fr friends, like you want to climb Mount Everest, you sort of just make it like a serious oath to do it. Like it's right, like there's no myths of climbing Mount Everest, right? But it's just but it's, you know, it's like a lifelong goal, so yeah, it's sort of a as a way to solidify your commitment and bind, you. right? Yeah, so right. I don't, I honestly don't know. Well, he introduces in the same parakalah Aleph, Kishim Shishvuas Shah Vishekar Blotase, Kach Mitzvah Sase Shish Vea Mishani Shaiv Shivua Bebastian Bashem. So just like it is a uh, just like um there's a losa say against swearing in vain or falsely, so too it is a mitzvah to say, now here's how he says it, that someone who is chai bashvu and bastian should swear bashem. Shnemar Uvishmoti Shavea. Zo mitzvah so that same Lushan used by Nadarim, Nadarim, that swearing by the great and holy name is one of the ways of avoda. Vihidur Vikidush Gadolhu, and is a beautification and a sanctification uh, of uh, uh, a great beautification and sanctification. Vihishavea Bishmo to swear in God's name. But the funny thing is like this is he does not, he, he specifies the case of swearing and based in. And then he gives the case where it's mutter to do it for a mitzvah. He doesn't, maybe he says this elsewhere. I'm not aware of where he says like, you could do it for like personal goals that are not like virtuous or, or, or you know, siag. I, I just don't know of, of a case like that. And the, the reason why I, I'd say that like a neder theoretically, I'm not saying you should, but a neder could be used for that. Whereas shavua, I, might, I have a question. Sh neder does not necessarily involve Hashem's name, whereas a shavua does. You know, so like I, I could see it being a degradation of the Shem Shemayim to use it for a trivial thing. Yeah. So is it, so like Nidr, like that's Isra and Shavua commanding or? So all the differences of Nidr and Shavua, I am not, um, uh, I would need to review before saying them definitively, but let's just see the, um, I mean, I know the, the classic distinction is that, uh, uh, <laughs> whenever I've, I've talked about this with someone who actually knows the Dharma Shavuos, they say it's not so, so simple. So that, I'm, I'm giving that as the preface here. But um, yeah, in fact, you know what? it's not so simple. I, I'd rather uh, look into it first before um, before attempting to say it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to hold off on that. Uh, let me just see if there's anything that here that deals with it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I guess that was interesting because 
I feel like half the cases of the Gamara are valid are, are people who swore who swore to never talk to never bet for sure about spikes. Mm. So yeah, that that's not doesn't seem the, like the most high use of uh of Shavuos, yeah. It feels like those like you know, like those most common use though. Maybe okay. Speaking of netter, not that I made a netter, but we have to do the definition of Nidui today because we've been <laughs> trying to get to it for three days. Okay, so let, let's start Perik Shvi, okay, of uh, Hilos uh, Tam Torah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, Chacham Zakin B'Chacham. We read this at the end of yesterday, but we didn't analyze it at all. Chacham Zakin B'Chacham, a Chacham who is an elder in Chachma, V'chin Nasi O'Av based in Shesarach, or a Nasi or based in all these three people who went bad. Okay, which the uh, Rav Makbili says Sarach is Shechata, that he sinned. I don't know if this is any sin or like a really bad sin. To me, Sarach implies like a bad sin, you know, but I, I don't know what the implication is. In Menadin Oso Bifarhesia, Lola, we never put him in Nidui in public ever, okay? Ella, in Kain Asa Ki Ravim Ben Nabat Vachaverav, unless he acts like the Rav Ben Nabat and his Chaverim. I assume Chaverim here is not his friends, I assume it means the other bad kings. Right, like uh, like people who are like him, you know, um, people who did like public bad, really bad chataim. Okay, aval kishachata shar chataos, but when he does other chataim, malki noso betina, we give him whiplashes in private. Shnemar v'kashalta hayom v'kashal gam navi imchalayla. Um, you stumbled today, and a navi also stumbled with you at night. I I don't know what the context of that pasuk is. In fact, uh, can you just slide me that tonight. Thank you. Um, I just want to see inside if there's any context we get just from reading it. Shea four or five. Um Hear the words of Hashem, o children of Israel, for Hashem has a grievance with the inhabitants of the land, for there is no truth, nor kindness, nor knowledge of God in the land. Rather, swearing, lying, murdering, robbing, and adultery. They have breached standards, and blood reaches more blood. Therefore, the land will be destroyed, and all who dwell in it will be enfeebled, along with the beasts of the field, and the bird of the heavens, and even the fish of the sea will be annihilated. Indeed, you will say, let no one contend, let no one reprimand. Let your people, yet your people contend with the Kohanim, with Kohen. Okay, here's our puzzle. You will stumble by day. And the, oh, they put in brackets, and the false prophet who is with you will also stumble, as if by night I will silence, and I will silence your mother. Okay, I don't know if this is going to be a literal interpretation. It says, Alpha P. Shakashal, even though he stumbled by day, Kasehu Belila, cover him at night. The only law, and we say to him, He kaved the shape of his echa. Maintain your honor. Uh, Bili says, He's kaved, keep your honor. Shemora al kabodacha, the shape of his echa, and sit in your house. Yeah. Doesn't that create a problem with Naive unless you're really vocal? Uh, what would be the Leaf Naive problem? Because you're not needling him in public, so no one knows he's in the doy. Well, no, so, so, so I, you know, I thought it meant when I first read it, you, you're not Minada him in public, you just do it in private. It sounds like you don't put him in Nido at all, right? It sounds like you just give him Malkus in private. I mean, the, the first part makes it sound like you you don't put him in Nidoi in public, but you do in private. But then the last part sounds like you get Malkus, not Nidoi, right? Yeah, but I, is it, I can hear you saying it's just, but why is he for a person? Yeah, uh, right. That's a good point. Let's just see how uh, the Rabbi Talgar translates it. They should never be publicly placed under a ban of ostracism. He doesn't have any footnotes. No, I think, I think your reading is right. So then how does it work out then if no one knows he's in Nidoy? Maybe, maybe the hope is that um, like, do we assume he does tshuva or something? I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. Not sure. Uh, the next uh, all right, sure. kol tamim chachamim shenischayev nidoy. So to any tamim chachamim who is liable for nidoy, aser lebeistin likpot ulanadosa bimhera. Yes, he sounds like we're avoid. Well, for this we avoid putting him in hera. I mean, he's saying don't jump to quickly put him in nidoy. Ella borchin midavers. I flee from this. Vinishmati mimeno and like find ways to get out of it, um, uh, like escape from it. Um, 
וחסידי החכמים, האם משתבחים, the great pious חכמים would praise themselves, שלא נמנו מעולם לנדוס תמי חכמים, that they were never appointed, which כך רב מקבילי says, השתתפוס בהרכב בייסטין, they never joined in a בייסטין, that put a תמי חכמים נידוי, אף על פי שנמנים להקוסו עם נסחי מלכוס, even though they but they were appointed in the Malchus Commission. But Philo Malchus Mardus, Ninim Aleha Lakosa. And even for Malchus Mardus, they were counted to be Menada him. So it does sound like we're trying to avoid putting these people in Nidoi and just like, uh, you know, settle it with uh, Malchus or like, you know, uh, do Chuva, something like that. Yeah. It's a, wait, does it say the Malchus counts the Nidoi? No, it sounds like, like we, well, first of all, okay, Malchus Mardus, I understand, right? Like they kind of have the right to do that whenever they want. Yeah. Malchus, like, doesn't it depend on what kind of fate they did? I mean, unless he's assuming that the other Chatalas we're talking about are all high Malchus, and if he did something that is, uh, you know, a Hamur, then you wouldn't do Malchus and you would put him in Nidoi. Like, I don't know what the standard of Yerav ben Nevat is, but you would think that Yerav ben Nevat is not just saying if you do something that's a Hamur, because then just say do Hamuros, you know? Yeah, I don't know what the parameters of this are, yeah. When I think Yerav ben Nevat, I think it looks like Causes mass sin because he because you're over in the vault built the golden calves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah, so then why doesn't he just say Elim Kain Hechati as a Rabin? You know. Yeah. Puzzling halacha just to figure out like practically what he means. Yeah. But, but would you agree with me that in the second paragraph he it does sound like he's saying avoid putting them in Nidoi as much as possible, yeah. right? Yeah. But I hear the before Hesio question. Right, it should just be Aim and Adina, so, or Misrachim Mila, you know. Let me uh, look at, see if uh, anyone says anything here. Right, where are we at? In Mada Tamatora Zion. Bavli, um, I'm just gonna see if this is the right source. No, let me, let me look at it on the actual page. What was the other source? The other source was Moed Katan. But I don't know, again, I don't know if this is... Uh... We did this earlier in the year. Yeah, I uh, think I'm gonna have to look into this with the... Um... The kafach, yeah. Is it saying you know the them so you can give them malchus? Is like are they refusing to come to base them to get malchus? No, I don't. Are you talking about the second paragraph or the first paragraph? Second. Talking about how much she needs five need to usher the base in the post when the. No, I think he's saying. No, I think he's saying. The second part. The second part. A few of malchus martyrs noon in Allah Allah posi. Well, it sounds like he's saying like this. There's two things. There's sound two. He's saying like this that there is a mida tova among chachamim to not impulsively be manada anyone, and it's not just a like that's a bad thing. It's that it's a positive quality to of, to like you know try to get out of being manada someone. And then the Mal the malchus martus thing. I don't know why he has to say it, but he's saying that like it's not a matter of punishing atomic Chachamim that they were hesitant to do because they would be fine doing that. It's the the need to it that they that they avoided doing. So that's really the question we have to answer is like why why is it a good thing to avoid being Minata someone who's high need to it? In fact, you could argue if you're going to be Minata and Amharitz, so Tom Chacham should know better and is going to create a worse Phil Hashem and a worse Michal, you know, so you should be Minata him. Yeah. If there's the fact that he says my hair makes it sound like that. So I guess a stricter than you did, you could be not them. Right. But the same thing, if there's any wiggle room, 
and you do it the way we, when you not only when you didn't have to, would that be a without a shame high of me, do And then you get to for that. Uh, right. I don't think it's, uh, I, I think it sounds like from the list that uh, some being Minada that's that uh, someone who's not Chayav Nidoy means if you are Minada someone for a reason other than the ones on the list. I don't think it means if you do it quickly when you're supposed to do it slowly. Yeah. I, mean, I think you're doing it for, I'm not saying you're doing it. Oh, so you're saying that means you, you're doing it for a reason not on this list? Yeah, not on the, yeah, in other words, the, the 24th item was the list was Aminada Mish in Ochaev Nidui, and the people who are Chayev Nidui are the other 23. Is it, or, or is that something you thought that the, the person was one of those 23, so you know that based off of that? Then you were, well, uh, well that, that could be the case also, right? But, but, but what I'm, not, I'm saying that if you, here is like a, a, a general directive that you should not be quick to do it. If you were quick to do it, you would be wrong, but it, you're not being Minada someone who's not Chayev Nidui. Right, you're, you're doing a, a legitimate need to it. Okay, yeah, so I, we'll have, I'll have to look into that later on. Let, let's go on, though. The who are needed. What is the need to it? Or how do we do need to it? I think this is, this is how do we do it. Omrin, we say, ploni bishamta. Okay, and bishamta, Rav Mokbila says, is benidui in Aramaic. Okay, um, I don't know what the etymology is. So we just say, so and so is in need to it. If we do who befanav, if we are menade him in his own presence, omrin ploni ze, we say, Ploni so and so. But Kherim, okay, and then what about Kherim, which he has not talked about yet? Omrin Ploni Maharam. We say he is Maharam. The Arur and accursed. Bo Allah, Bo Shavua, Bo Nidoi. Arur implies a curse and a Shavua and a Nidoi. I think that's what Bo means, right? So if you use Arur, then, uh, then that, that has all these things. That's strange. Okay, Keta Matirin Hanidui Acherem. How do we matir a Nidui or Acherem? Omri Lah, we say, Sharui Lah Umahu Lah. It is permitted to you, Sharui is mutter, and then Mahu Lah and forgiven to you. Vim Hiti Ruhu Shlobafanov, and if we matir him um, not in his presence, Omri Ploni Sharui Lo Umahu Lah. We say, we switch to the third person. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds pretty easy. <laughs> Just like that. Okay. Um, and we know that you don't need a base team for it, right? Any individual could do it. Strange thing. I mean, you know, Chizkiyahu used the uh, analogy of like a citizen's arrest. And like, yeah, there is such a thing as a citizen's arrest, but this seems like way easier than a citizen's arrest. Like, you don't even have to like bring him in, you know, you just say it. Strange institution. Okay, now here we finally get to the answer to our question. What is the behavior that the Menuda has to accustom himself in? You know, conduct for himself and that other people should behave with him with. Okay, Menuda. Asur Lasaper Ulachabis is Asurim to Lasaper is Makbili Lahis Taper to get his haircut or Lachabis or to do get his clothes cleaned. Ka'avel, just like a person in mourning, Kol Yame Niduyo. Okay, for all the days of his Niduy. And so not like a morning person where it's only until it's for the entire Nidoy. We cannot uh, do Zimun with him. He can't join in with the Zimun. You cannot include him in 10 for anything that requires 10. So no inclusion in the minion for any minion purposes. Uh, and you may not sit with him in his four Amos. Yeah? <laughs> It was like Dali, someone says someone else did Brussel Matala. So either either you hear someone do Brussel Matala, you don't do anything, or you, or they do or you do like somehow and then you end up in Nido, which means enough of me, which means that it was everything was Brussel Matala because so I was uh, classic uh classic pupil question. Okay. Um that's funny. Uh hula akhirim, he may teach others. Okay, Shona here meaning Malamid, but Shoni Lo, and they can teach him. The Niskar, and he can be hired as a worker, the Sokher, and he can uh, hire others, right? So in other words, we don't interfere with his, um, his Talmud Torah life or his, uh, his livelihood, uh, unless his livelihood involves being very close to people. <laughs> okay, V'im meis b'niduyo, if he dies in his niduy, Bastian shulkin umanechen evan al rono. So the Bastian sends, this is a crazy thing, uh, like crazy, like, like, extreme thing they send someone to put a stone on his uh, casket clomer shaheen robinoso as if to say that they're stoning him i never understood by the way side question when or why jews have the custom to put stones on 
people's grave sites when this is the halacha that you, when do we put a stone on someone's grave site? When they died in Nidui. So why are people doing that in cemeteries? Like, I just don't understand it, you know? I don't know what, like, when, when did it start and how, how did it get past this? Okay, Lefishu who moved on Mina Tibor, and you're signifying that he's separated from the Tibor. Mean Sarah's low marsh in Maspidimoso, and needless to say, we do not eulogize him. The in Malavin as Mitaso, we don't accompany his uh, his his beer, B I E R. Yeah, okay, so that, that's those that's that's what Nidui is. Okay, Yasar Allah Hamaharam, and more than that is the Kharan. So, um, so presumably it includes all these things, and then Shaino Shona Lafarim, he may not teach others. The ain't shown in low, people cannot teach him. But he can teach himself. So that he does not uh, forget his learning. Okay, that's an interesting Havmina, right? That if he be Asr Batama Torah, but nope, he can do it for maintenance purposes. The ain't niskar, he cannot be um, hired. The ain't niskar in low, and people cannot be uh, hired to him. The ain't nosin benosin imo, and he cannot uh, do business. You can't do business with him. The ain't mis asking imo, elam at esek te parnasasa. The only business the, the people could do with him is just a minute amount in order to give him his livelihood. Yes, yeah, so that's like a crippling, uh, you know, Nidui uh, is not a crippling situation. It's just an isolationist one. This one, like, can like really wreck you. Like, you're going to become impoverished, your learning is going to suffer. That's pretty big. Okay. Uh, let's do this last one here and then do the footnotes. Yasha Latiro. If a guy um, sits in Nidui for 30 days and does not uh, uh, want, does not ask to be released, Manadin Ososhnia, we release we, we Manada him a second time. That's funny. Um, right. So in other words, uh, that seems to indicate that like he is encouraged to ask to be released, right? If he sits for 30 days, uh, 30 more days, will it be his last hero? Maharimi no so. Can you upgrade him? <laughs> upgrade him to a harem. Okay, wow. This is uh, quite interesting. All right, so let's look at the Makbili on Mish Yasha Bini Duyo. Shlosha Mine Nidui Him. Okay, here we go. There are three types of Nidui. This seems important. Kimitur uh, Khan, the one described here. Okay, that's number one. Number two, Mish Eno Mashalim Mash Nishayev, someone who does not pay what he's liable for. Masrin Bo Sheni Vachamishi Vishani, we warn him on Monday, Tuesday, and Monday. Umanadin also Pam Achas, and then we put him in Nidue once. The Imlo Tava Hataras Niduyo, the Meshach Shloshim Yom, and if he does not make a claim, uh, you know, demand to release his Nidue in a uh, duration of 30 days, so then we put him in Nidoi. So that's, that's Nidoi number two. Nidoi number three, Mishalo Rata Lehishabea Shavua Durabanan. Someone who does not want to make a Shavua Durabanan. Okay. Mish, Mish, Mishamti we, we put him in Nidoi. Vimlo Tava Hataras Nidoyo Bemeshach Shloshim Yom. And if we don't, uh, if he does not ask for his Nidoi to be matured after 30 days, Makin also Makas Mardus, Matirin as Nidoyo. So then we don't put him in Cherem, we whip him with Marcus Mardus and then we release his Nidoyo. Yeah. Kurt Schroeder not wanting to do Schroeder Mal. Kurt which Schroeder was talking about? Because I thought the Schroeder Mal was really in a court case where if you don't make Schroeder, it just means you lose the case. Yeah, I honestly uh, have not done those halakhos in a long time. Um, let me just see if we can find it easily. Um, I, I know it's in a court case, but I don't remember what happens if you don't do it. Let's see. Uh, okay, so he's not going to say that. What about Divre? Oh, oh, hold on a second. Yeah, see, I really, this is this is the type of area where I need the uh, Machbili version with the outline because I, I just don't know my way around Hefla Shavuos. Um, okay, these are four types of Shavua. So Shavuos Bikal and Shavuos Edus. This is a Shavua like in Toyin Vinitan. Maybe it's in Toyin Vinitan um, in, um, in say, from Mishpatim. Mishpatim. Uh, Toyin Vinitan. Let's just see. I don't know what this is going to be. Is it real problem? No, Shavua. Uh, I'm going to read this, even though it might not be relevant. Um, in, this is uh, in uh, Aleph Bayes. 
אין לך מחויב שבוע מן התורה חוץ משלושה, there are only three people who are חייב מן השבוע מדורייסה, מי שהודה במקצת המטלטלין, someone who admits to half of the מטלטלין, ומי שחייבו עד עד אחד. You know, I, I, don't, I don't even know these cases, I don't even want to know if I want to read them, if, uh, if, I, if, I don't, if I'm not familiar, I don't want to make a mistake here. Um, yeah, I'm really not familiar with the system of, uh, of the Shavuos. Oh, here we go. Let's see if you list them. So we put in, this is our halacha. So someone who's chayev in a shvuah midibrehim, um, uh, v'niftarin, or among those who swore an oath and are putter, someone who makes an oath over a, a dubious claim, or a I'm not familiar with all these cases, but let's just see the, the outcome. Uh, if he does not come and he doesn't uh, uh, claim to have, uh, ask for his nidui to be released, oh, so, uh, his answer is another question we had. Yeah, I, I, I don't know enough to say about this, but this answers another question. Uh, in the case of the Talmud Chacham, so it does sound like the malchus that we give him are these malchus, maybe. In other words, because he says, So in other words, what I'm wondering is, for an ordinary person, we put them in Nidoy, and then, uh, you know, and then we, it runs its course. But for a Talmud Chacham or a Nazi or an Abbasian, maybe we skip the Nidoy and then we just go straight to the malchus. That sounds wild, but, but you see that there's malchus after here. I, I really need to look at the coffin in order to get this. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure. Let me just look and see if there is a um, uh, Rabbi Tauger on the, where were we at now? Oh, in Talmud Torah. What led us here? Um, <laughs> oh, oh, there's something about Nidoy. I was Nidoy, you're following the cop. The Machbili. Yeah, oh. Right. oh, yeah, 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 that's I was, right, right, right. I was wondering, I was just, I was confused because of the same claims case. Right. I do not see these in case I get. I guess I'm still confused. Yeah, I'm also confused, yeah. I guess, I guess the Chazaka is at his, and then it's just now. I guess so, yeah. I'm looking at Yeah, I don't know. Like yeah, I'm not sure. All right, so I'm gonna see if I can look into this uh, and then see which of these questions we answer for tomorrow because we have a we have a couple. But uh, all right, at least we read the definitions of Nido and Karim today. Again, we got a lot of a uh, lot of the and Hilshvos. <laughs> all right, stop for today. <laughs>